Cash Market here on the Schwab Network. It's time for cash tags. For that, let's bring in Landon Swan, co-founder at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Landon. Do we have Landon? Okay, well. I'll go. Yeah, Kevin. Landon. Okay. Playing the part of Landon Swan today is so, Kevin Hicks. So 13F comes yeah. out. You know, people look at them. Yeah. It's interesting, right? But it's lagging, right? And a perfect example is Ulta. Berkshire Hathaway takes a small stake in the mm-hmm. shares. Stock's popping 12% today. I get that. Yep. It just hit three-year lows this week. And if you look back at the quarter, that stock traded from $529 mm-hmm. all the way down to 364 Over that three-month period, we're just basically back to maybe the end of uh, um, July uh, prices for this right. stock. So. Hey, he's probably still not a winner on his investment at this point, even with the pop today. The problems with Ulta is the growth is slowed. Right. However, they still do a a lot of business. They still, uh, you know, they still have a, a great business going forward. And here's the thing, Tom, that I think probably attracted Warren Buffett to this name. The P.E.'s never been lower. I went back to 2010. It's never been a 14. So, PE, it, okay. yeah, the P.E. ratio. It's got Now it's a 14.4, but it was slightly below 14, right at 14. So it's from a valuation standpoint, it's never been cheaper than it is right now. So if it starts to recover, yes, absolutely. This is an inexpensive name. Yep. Uh, now we've got uh, our guest here. That's Landon Swan, co-founder at Likefolio. Landon, get, give me your take here because Kevin and I just kind of went over, you know, the fact that the stock is still falling. Uh, they gave an update in early uh, April that kind of uh, sent the sh- uh, shares spiraling down. Uh, but are you seeing any positive data on Ulta that makes, uh, you know, Buffett buy the stock? Yeah, I mean, well, let's, let's talk a little bit about Warren Buffett. I mean, it's interesting that you know, the stock goes down, what, uh, 40%, something like 35%. Um, and everyone's wondering if it's too cheap. But then you find out he gets in, and you're like, oh, well, I want to I want to get in too, right? It's, it's just amazing that the following nature of the market. Uh, you know, doing a little back of the napkin math based on the amount that he's got in it and the number of shares looks like 385 was his price. So he's not quite back to even yet, but I'm sure he's happy today. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you know, you got to follow a winner like that. But yeah, the, when you look at the, you know, some of the data, the daily active users on their web Websites up significantly. It's, almost, it's over doubled year over year, uh, and in fact, when you look at you know how they're doing versus Sephora, they're they're clearly the leader here, and it's starting to become, or, or maybe it's extending, um, where Ulta is not quite as high end as Sephora. Right? They're getting out more locations. They're going more for the the quantity as opposed to the quality. Not that they're low quality, but Sephora is definitely higher end. And, and you know, you look at one of the things that, that tells me that is Ulta's level of happiness is at 70%. It's lower than Helena Troy, Estee Lauder, Elf, Sephora, all of those. So, um, you know, it's more of a, you know, masses play, volume play. Uh, but you can see here their their daily active users on the app are just incredible here. I mean, the, the back to school shopping uh, here in July was the highest that they've ever seen. This is the highest month that they've ever had on record. So uh, they're definitely doing things right when it comes to that strategy is just, you know, going for the volume play. Um, and, you know, when you look at how they're even just their website, their website traffic, they use it, the visits, excuse me, are increasing about 20 to 30 percent higher or I'm sorry faster than the segment overall than all of their competition combined on a on a month-to-month basis their website traffic is growing faster than the segment so uh, definitely some some strong signals coming out of them and now, of course you talk about the downside you know last quarter you know they talked about how there was um, you know a lot more places that that um, competition could buy. I think they said a thousand new stores where you could buy different types of products that compete with Ulta. And of course, online availability is threatening their market share. Uh, the EPS was down year over year, even though the revenue was up year over year. So, um, you know, there's pros and cons here, but eventually it becomes a question of value. And then I think that, you know, the Warren Buffett investment kind of answered that question. Like, wh- when is too low when is when is low enough too low right and and i think 318 was too low uh, and so now we've popped back up to near 370 and um, obviously that you know investors are happy there but 
Uh, Ulta is doing well, and and I think that it's just, you're going to have to consider the the buy low, sell high strategy, which I'm not normally a big fan of. But eventually, when it goes from 575 to getting close to 300, you got to say, you know what, we might be undervalued here, uh, and that's what's happened. And um, you know, the data overall, I think, is somewhat bullish. It's just I think you have to understand the their strategy is going more for the broader markets as opposed to the super high end and you know it's it's worked for a lot of different companies it's it's obviously working for ulta landon the list of activist investors getting involved in names now and taking stakes that's the kind of the personality of this market right if they like you they run you to ungodly levels and if they hate you they destroy you down to levels never seen before and that's why you're seeing nike now has an activist investor starbucks right before they hired um brian nickel now ulta it's kind of spreading throughout all these beat up names and then the question is that's the first part of my question to you and the second part how much we were so in tune with the Ulta Target uh, partnership. And remember, we thought Sephora and its matchup wasn't as good as Target is Ulta. How much is Target to blame for Ulta struggling? Because it's them that seems to be failing, not Ulta. Right. I think that maybe mentally, I don't know, you know, ins I can't get inside the boardroom over at Ulta, but I think for investors mentally, that matchup was like, the golden ticket, right? It's just going to solve all the problems. It's going to be unbelievable. We're going to, you know, go multiples up because the target does so well. Um, but that's just not the case. And and so they've done a good job of getting their distribution into other channels. And so I think that, you know, they they attempted this this target partnership. And it, you know, I I can't say that it was a complete failure, but um, they definitely are spreading themselves out more and getting them getting their the product out there more. And I think that you know just the the uh, the website and the app usage is being up kind of shows that direct to consumer is definitely a viable option for them. They want to get get eyeballs on them out and you know and target into various stores, uh, but they want to get the sales direct. And I think you can actually look at their rewards program uh, to look at that. I mean they've got 44 million users and those users account for 95 percent of their sales. Uh, so they have a very very uh, a loyal fan base and um, you know they're they're doing a great job of selling direct to consumer they just have to again continue to spread out get that distribution down uh, so that people can find their products try them get addicted get on the app become uh, reward users and then just get them direct i think that's the play for them uh, and so far i think they're executing fairly well so even after this uh, 12 percent pop land and are you guys uh, you know going into earnings at the end of this month uh, what kind of earnings score would you guys have on this even with the pop yeah, so that's funny. I, you know, when we when we were looking at this topic today for the show, uh, I looked at the earnings score yesterday, and I think it was plus forty five, and today it's like plus twenty five. So that is, it was a, you know, we we value the stock move into that score, a uh, big move against it. So we'd still be slightly bullish here. Uh, remember, twenty is kind of our cutoff. So we were a little bit excited before this move. Uh, we thought it was a bit oversold, especially with a lot of the data coming out positive. Uh, but with this move, it's. It's definitely taken away a lot of the appeal. However, it's enough to still uh, have a bullish slant on this one going into earnings. If they report it tomorrow, we still got to wait two weeks, so we'll see how things shake up. But uh, that's where we're at right now. All right. Great stuff. As always, Landon, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right. That's Landon Swan, co-founder at Likefolio, breaking down Ulta.